I thank Leslie for thinking of me uh, to participate here. You're pretty much at another level than I am. You're all pretty much professional or students. Um, I'm more like a hobbyist that wants to do more, and um, I want to be farmer. I'm a lot of things. But anyway, thanks for including me. Um, so I've been growing flax since 2005, very uh, small surface, maybe 3,000 square feet. Um, and I hand processed from seed to fabric. And actually, I brought uh, my lucky first fabric, uh, beginner's luck fabric. So I grew, I grew this cloth, and I spun it and wove it and everything. So it takes forever. <laughs> It takes forever, so I would like to have a greater surface, but you know, I have piles and piles of stem in my garage, and my husband is starting to wonder, you know. So, so very quickly, you, you feel like you're dreaming of getting some sort of machine to help you along, you know, because it's starting to accumulate, and you want this and not a pile of stem. So, I looked into, I did a bit of research of what kind of machinery that could be available. And what I found out is that it costs millions and millions of dollars. And it's basically the most reputed uh, manufacturer of machines are all European, mainly in Belgium. So I'll detail, I'll give you more details. That's a field of uh, flax in uh, French uh, Flanders, little blue flowers. Uh, how do I advance this? There you go. So for the harvesting uh, part, uh, what's available is huge machines uh, made, of course, for a global market. And it's all to accommodate the process of redding. The redding is actually uh, flax once it has to be pulled. And then that machine, the puller at the left top, will lay the stem on the ground and it's put there to rot to a point where the fibers will detach from the wooden part of the stems. So once it's ready, you have to, to turn it so the redding is even, and then you have to pick it as soon as it's redded enough, because if you red it too much, uh, you lose everything. It's rotted <laughs> till there's nothing there, right? So you really have to... Uh, have some sort of expertise to know how to pick it. So basically, this is the kind of machines that are available. Like there's a puller and then a machine to turn it. And then you need some kind of lifting device when you want to make the balers. And the balers are re really specific because the twine has to go through and through all the layers when you roll it in. So all these machines are specific to flax. You can't use it for anything else. So I mean. Think about it, <laughs> you know. Um, there's other method of redding. Uh, you can do it in ponds or uh, hot water tanks or rivers. Or now uh, re um, there's a lot of research on uh, redding with enzyme. Actually, the National Research Council is uh, doing a lot of research on that. But none of these methods are proven to be either environmentally or economically uh, uh, sound, so you have to revert to the, the field reading with all the machines there. And this is uh, what the, the round bales, it comes to uh, the building where it's further processed, and you need this kind of a machine, it's called a scutching line, and this is to produce a long fiber flax, and that costs millions too. There's uh, fluted rollers there that breaks the stems, and then uh, there's, it goes through belts, and there's uh, turbines with metal bars that hit the stems to scrape out the, the straw pieces that are left on the, on the flag. So it's really to, to clean the, the fibers. So this is what it looks like, the long fiber flax when it's all cleaned and coming out of the scutching line. And uh, there's a lot of uh, material that's left over from that process. And it's not to put in the garbage. You can do more with it. There's a lot of uh, byproduct that can come out of it if you're ready to invest even more. 
So you got to separate these short fiber from the pieces of uh, straw. So you would need some other machinery, some shakers and some sieves and all sorts of rollers and <laughs> a few million more. <laughs> but, um, and also you need other types of machine to, to handle all, all this material so you can store it in, in an orderly, orderly fashion. Uh, you need to take care of the seeds, to clean the seeds, um, and uh, to clean it from the dust and from the, the, the pieces of straw that can be mixed all with the, the seeds. So you need to be equipped, still a few million dollars there. And if you want to uh, look into, like I said, the byproducts, the short fibers can be processed further into insulation. So if you want to go into that either with a, a partner or yourself, you really need to invest probably in a, a needle punch machine of some sort. The seeds can be used for linseed oil. So if you have a partner or want to do that yourself, a few million there again. Um, and the pieces of straw can be uh, used, for example, for um, animal litter. So you would need to really clean it really good because there's a lot of dust. You don't want to put your horses in a litter that's full of dust. So you would need uh, further, further investment if you want to go into that. Most importantly, you really need a good filter installation, a de-dusting installation, because as I mentioned, uh, the redding is really fungus that <laughs> works on the stems, so you don't want to breathe in the spores and all the dust, so you really need that. So, and I was told that those kind of insta installation cost as much as the whole scutching line. So if you pay two million for the scutching line and another two million for de-dusting. And after that, you know, you get the, the long, nice fibers. You need to hackle them. So this is hackling. <laughs> uh, we try to buy some pins, 200 pins, but nobody wants to sell us 200 pins. They want us to buy that for two millions. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's really hard to get pins. <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway. And then, well, you have to have really specific machine for the, the drafting. Uh, because the wool drafting frames don't really work for a long line. The, the fiber's too long and it will break your wool machine. So, and I guess you can't buy a machine with four spindle. You need to buy some with uh, 650, I don't know. And I ask uh, somebody that deals in used machine, do you have a smaller? Well, just use four out of those. Yeah, but I have to buy the 600 to buy four, to use four, I mean, it's. That's the kind of answer you get. So, and then you have to, if you want to pursue the, the sew to sew, you have to, to uh, spin. And uh, long line flax is wet spin, so you can't use any sort of other spinning outfit. And actually, from what I've been told, there's no long line fiber spinning in North America at all. So anybody that ventures into that in North America will be first, a uh, first or it's probably been done way back, but there's none now. And then you have to deal with the short fiber that you got from the hackling. It's not worthless. It's, you can spin a, another type of yarn, that's tow yarn. So you need to rehackle it and redraft it, and uh, that's dry spun in a specific machine. And then after all that investment, well, the rest, you know, the, the designing, the weaving, the sewing, the marketing, you have to have an, to make enough money to pay for a $20 million investment. And I only plant 3,000 square feet, so <laughs> what's a girl to do? Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, you can look at machines that were available in the early 1900s. Like you have those kind of uh, roller breakers that you can crank. You could probably motorize it. And this is a, a Flemish scutching wheel. You could probably motorize it and make it more secure. They actually pedal that like this. And they, <laughs> they hold the flax like, I don't know how they do it anyway. But um, you could probably motorize it, but 
basically my conclusion in all this report is that um, probably I would need to work with a machine shop and become an inventor <laughs> or uh, work together with others that want to work in small units and perhaps make a big order of several small units and bang on the door of these big Belgium manufacturers and say, hey, we can't order the 15 million version, but we have 10 orders for this kind of machine. Can you do it for us? So that's uh, my presentation. <laughs>